Hello everybody, Argent here. Since I have a bunch of new subscribers, and just because I like to do this periodically, just because I like to be very clear with people. Um, it's not that I'm counter-signaling, I just want people to hang me for the things I've done or the things I believe rather than the things I don't. Plus, I think it's very important to be real with you. One of my promises when I started this channel was to always be real with you guys. Uh, to try to give you my honest opinion on things. Uh, to just try to give you what I'm like in, in real life. So I'm doing this to just talk about what I believe, why I believe it, to kind of tell a bit of my story, and just to kind of explain my thinking. Uh, broadly speaking, I think you could call me um, a traditionalist conservative. Um, I'm a conservative Catholic too, so I guess you could say I'm a tr traditionalist conservative who is also um, strongly inspired by Catholic social teaching and race realism. I guess you could describe my views. I'm kind of the moderate far right, if that makes sense, and that's kind of where I position myself. My, my good friend Iberian once said, RG, you would be a normal person in a sane age, and I think most of what I support is not particularly radical. Um, as we'll discover in a minute. So kind of how did I come to be in, in these spheres? It's, I think to explain kind of my thinking, I just kind of have to go through it. Uh, when, when, you, when you listen to me, you have to understand the environment I'm from. I'm from southern Ontario um, in the Toronto area. Toronto is probably the most diverse place on earth. So I went to high school, um, I guess you could call me a socially conservative or like socialist when I went into university before I kind of formally became part of the right. Why was I kind of like that? Well, first off, I was raised in a two-parent household. Um, my father always worked for a living. My mother always worked. Uh, she spent a lot of her time, though, raising us. I've always had a very positive father figure in my life. I've always had a positive mother figure in my life. And to me, it just seemed natural that the two-parent family was the ideal. There are things that only a mother can do. There are things that only a father can do. That was just something that, I guess, because it was kind of innate, and I've just always held to the nuclear family. Um, it's, it's not even a particularly ideological thing. I just grew up with it. I found in general that most people would go to their fathers for specific things and go to their mothers for specific things, and they behaved in a very different way. So, I don't know. It seems pretty straightforward to me. And once I went on and studied history later, I found out that pretty much every successful civilization has had some variant of the nuclear family. Now, there's societies that have practiced polygamy, but that's normally only for the upper classes. Uh, virtually every society or every civilization that succeeded has had marriage as a man and a woman raising their children. And that's just kind of seemed the norm to me, so I always supported that. Um, I've always kind of had a dislike for... for um, any form of polyamory. Um, maybe that comes from my, in part, just my uh, anxiety disorders, uh, where just having an intimate relationship with one person is very hard, let alone a bunch. It just also seems very immoral to me. So there's that. So when I went to high school, um, if you're in the GTA or the Greater Toronto Area, which is probably the most diverse place on earth, you're going to go to school with a lot of minorities, which I did. Um, my school was probably about, I don't know, 60% white, 30% Asian, 10% other minority. And kind of what I found was when I started talking to the Chinese kids, many of whom were, were raised in Canada, uh, they didn't know anything about Canada. They didn't know anything about Western civilization. In fact, they kind of had an open contempt for it. Many of these people were not fresh off the boat. They were born in Canada. They spoke with a Canadian accent but they weren't Canadian in any meaningful sense. They knew all kinds of stuff about Chinese history, um, but they would sit at their own tables, they'd talk in Chinese, they'd make fun of us in Chinese behind our backs, they'd make fun of the white kids a lot. Uh, they really had a superiority complex. I remember talking to some of them and I'd start quoting uh, some stuff about Rome, and they're like, what's Rome? What's ancient Greece? Who's Alexander the Great? Who's Julius Caesar? Who's William Shakespeare? And they, they didn't know anything. Um, because they, they viewed the West as a completely alien culture. And I, I just said, why are these people here? And if, if they're going to be here, they should adopt this. And it, it kind of, I, I wasn't a racialist at the moment, but I kind of was like, these people aren't related to us by blood or by inheritance. 
so why are they hit here and why are we trying to build a society with people with completely different I guess conceptions of reality and completely different histories it just didn't really make sense to me and I didn't like the fact that I was the one who had to change they didn't have to change and they didn't have to integrate I had to change I couldn't say things so I, I didn't like that so when I kind of went into university I'd always been anti-diversity and I'd always kind of believed in the nuclear family um, I was against gay marriage for a very long time. I was briefly for it. Um, the reason I was for it, though, was kind of for socially conservative reasons. I thought that if you let gays get married, then they would stop kind of the really promiscuous lifestyle, and more of them would kind of settle down and just kind of be normal, well-adjusted people. Uh, but that didn't really work out. So... I went into university as kind of being like a socially conservative socialist, and I found that the left wasn't really interested in economic socialism anymore. Um, whenever I would talk about nationalizing industry or redistribution of wealth, they didn't really care about that. Uh, they weren't interested in equality. They were just they just hated white people. They hated Western civilization. And I guess you could have called me an honest leftist. I actually believed in. Um, not necessarily feminism, but women's rights. I believed in um, anti-racism, I guess, anti-discrimination, all that stuff, but I applied it fairly. So when I looked at the world, I, I said, well, which countries are the most racist, which countries are the most discriminatory? And I, I picked a lot of Islamic and African countries. because so I looked at the West, and I'm like, well, women here don't face any discrimination, really. They, they face, if anything, privilege. Uh, minorities in the West face privilege. And I said, well, look at Mauritania where um, the black population or the African population is enslaved by the Arab population. Look at Sudan. Look at Saudi Arabia where women aren't allowed to drive. Just look at all these countries. And whenever I'd point this out, people would just call me a racist. I'm like, well, I'm just someone who supports the things that you claim to stand for. And none of these people actually stood by it. I remember getting shouted down for being against slavery, um, for being against genocide. Um, people said you have to support it because it's, it's non-whites doing it. And I just was, I was actually even like a neo, I was kind of a neo-conservative, I was kind of an, a neo-colonialist actually, because I thought that these countries were such just immoral messes that we had to retake them over and force them to civilize. So that was kind of my position on the left. So as in university, I just kind of found that these people were completely full of shit. Uh, they didn't believe any of the things they claimed to believe in. They weren't interested in the poor. Uh, they weren't interested in the working class. They were only interested in their um, navel-gazing and signaling how virtuous, virtuous they are. So after that, I, I also grew up in a very liberal Christian household, so I was very much anti-Christian. Um, I was actually anti-Christian for a different reason than most people. I wasn't against it because it was too harsh or too restrictive. I was against it because it wasn't restrictive enough. I grew up in a very liberal, like I said, Christian household, and the faith asked nothing of you. Um, it didn't ask you to subscribe to a moral code. It didn't even ask you to go to church. And I didn't like that because I look at the world and I see all this evil and suffering, and I think we have a duty to fight evil, that we have a duty to fight people like ISIS, that we have a duty to... Um, take down rapists and criminals and to, to bring justice. Justice is something I really strongly believe in and I felt that mainstream Christianity didn't have that. I also wasn't really well educated. So after I kind of got through university, I, I started looking into Christianity. So I said, well, if this is, if this is hated and this is viewed as uh, the locus of the right and the locus of everything they hate, maybe this isn't that bad. So I started studying it um, at great length I studied a lot of philosophical arguments for God. I studied a lot of historical evidence for Christianity. I did a very in-depth, it took a year or two to go through it all. And I eventually kind of realized that most of my views, um, my Platonist views, my moral, mor morality, my ethics, my all that was extremely similar to Catholicism, um, at least real Catholicism. So I converted to Catholicism, and it made me a much better person. Um, I stopped blaming everybody else for my problems. I made a lot of attempts. I suffer from bipolar disorder and bad mental illness, so I started getting therapy. 
I started taking better care of myself. I started treating people better. And it just made me a much better person and a much stronger person. And I have a very strong personal relationship with um, Our Lady. Uh, and I wear a miraculous medal. And I guess kind of one of the, the things I started this channel for was to um, promote, was to try to Christianize the alt-right. So when I, when I became Christian, I went on a trip to Los Angeles, um, just a vacation with my family. And when I was there, I saw how blacks live. They lived like animals. Uh, they, they were lying on the street, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was just a shit show. They were lighting trash cans on fire. Um, I started to look at, at like crime statistics. I started to look at just a bunch of things with a much more open eyes. And I kind of, ironically enough, out of Christian charity and Christian ethics, I said, diversity is, is immoral. Um, diversity ultimately doesn't make anyone happy. Diversity makes everyone miserable. It's not fair to the native population. It's not fair to the immigrants. Uh, the immigrants have to live in a society that they have absolutely no ties to. They, they have to live in kind of this, this alienated state in a society that rapidly... When, when you start to accept people from a completely alien culture, to make it work, you have to suppress nativism. You have to suppress resistance to them. You ultimately have to shut down free speech and a lot of other things. Um, to try to make them economically integrate, you have to force affirmative action and a bunch of other things. So I kind of started thinking about it. I'm like, this isn't working. Uh, we've spent trillions of dollars. We've spent all this time in the, the, in the States and in Canada trying to integrate natives, trying to integrate blacks, trying to get them a hand up. And it's just not working because they're, they're fundamentally different people who are stuck in a society that they're not compatible with. And what would be the best for all of us, and this is when I came across Ramsey Paul, was we all have our own countries. Um, blacks have their own countries. Uh, whites have their own countries. Muslims have their own countries. Christians have their own countries. The Japanese have their own country. And we can have our own countries, our own societies, with our people, with our culture, with our religion. <coughs> And we can have that sense of common identity. We can have that sense of unity. And, yeah. And, and kind of I started researching this stuff more and more. And I found homogenous societies tend to have higher social trust. Um, if you live in a society where people share your values, where people tend to look like you, where people tend to be culturally similar to you, you're just less likely to abuse welfare because you have a sense of responsibility. You're more patriotic because you feel your country represents you. It's kind of how a lot of white Americans felt about Obama and how a lot of blacks feel about white presidents. It's, it's not your people running the country. If it's not your people running the country, you don't feel engaged in the country. So... It's, it's diversity hasn't been good for blacks. They're, they're miserable. They're full of bitterness um, <clears throat> and rage. It's not good for Muslims feel completely alienated in the West, and they alienate people in the West. Uh, and I read Putnam's stuff when I was in university about how social trust and social capital rapidly disintegrates under diversity. So I said, this isn't good for anyone. Um, so I, I actually started opposing it out of Christian charity. And then once I started to get into the alt-right and started to read about um, race and IQ and just a bunch of other stuff, I said, this, this is just not good. We shouldn't be mixing these people together because what it creates is it creates people like Elliot Rogers who don't have an identity. And they don't have an identity and they just kind of lose it. They become these rootless cosmopolitans who don't really have a country or, or a culture or a society to call their own. And it's just... It's not fair to them. It's it's not it's not fair to the children. It's not fair to the society. It's not fair to the other country. And in a lot of cases, you could also make make the argument that mass immigration is bad from the country people immigrate from. Because so if you have like a country like Canada, uh, which has a point system, so we only take educated people. Basically, we're taking the best and brightest from developing countries who are in the most dire need of them, and who can who can, are in much worse. Uh, have a much lower ability to educate people. Um, it, it costs a lot. It's a lot harder for Ethiopia to, ed to get someone a PhD than it is for Canada, um, just on the societal resources. 
So there's that, and I just studied a bunch of other cultures. I'm not exactly a xenophobe. I, I like a lot of things other societies produce. Um, I like studying Japanese and Chinese history. I like studying um, Islamic history, South American history. Uh, I like all these peoples. I just want them to live in their own countries. And I want us to live in our own country. And we can be friends. We can trade. We can visit each other's countries. But ultimately, I think there has to be sovereignty and there has to be a commitment to preserve your culture and your people. And by people, I mean in a biological sense. Now, where does whiteness come into this? I'm half English, half German. I'm not a pure European ethnicity. Um, I'm a mixture of different European ethnicities. And in North America, I kind of feel that there is a new ethnic group. There's like the American uh, Canadian ethnic group, which is kind of a mixed white ethnic group. And they've developed, they look different from um, Europeans. I mean, they're still both white, but they look different, etc. So when you talk about white nationalism, I mean it in a, um, a new world context, because that's kind of the white American ethnic group is a mixture of Italian, German, English, Scottish, Irish, German, a bunch of different ones, and it's not really a particular European one anymore. And it's just kind of like America is kind of a, a, an amalgamation of different parts of cultures from Europe. So that's kind of to my mind what white nationalism means. Applying it to Europe is, is kind of difficult, and I'll talk about that at some other point. So, in essence, I suppose what you could say I, I believe in is I'm a traditional conservative. I think, generally speaking, if you look at history and you look at society, you can kind of determine what works and what doesn't. Um, looking at the flow of history, looking at kind of the equilibrium and what causes societies to succeed and fail, I think you can say, for instance, that the, the nuclear family as the ideal and as the social norm is overwhelmingly good for society. There's any number of studies that back this up. And it's just, it's just what, like I said, what every successful society is pursuing. You have a man and a woman who are in a committed relationship who raise their children together and provide both the masculine and feminine influences. Um, monogamy is, is a good thing. Religion, especially Christianity, is a good thing. I am a dedicated Christian. Um, I am... I suppose you could say I believe very strongly and I'm very devout to it and I do believe that a return to kind of Christian values will, will help the West and I think I've reconciled I think I've explained how I reconcile I guess kind of my racial views and other stuff is I think it's it's not compassionate to try to build this tower of Babel to build this this society where everybody's alienated and everybody hates one another and people just aren't happy and it, it, it accelerates the decline of the family and, and public morality I don't see how that's that's compassionate um, to me it smacks of the sin of pride where you're just trying to signal how great you are and how tolerant you are to me being a Christian and to me being moral means taking making hard decisions that are that are for the greater good and that are better for people that often go against your pride and so to me they're they're perfectly in line and I don't really have that much of a tension between them to be perfectly honest um, I don't really think any of these people are subhuman I just don't like them necessarily I don't want them in my country I, I don't see why that's so bad so one of my missions is I want to convert the alt-right to Christianity and, and to Catholicism so I don't really let people um, so with regards to neo-pagans, I, I don't like them. I think they're goofy. I think they're LARPers. I don't have them on my podcast. I don't let I don't really I don't really let people promote it in the comments. If they want to watch me, they can. If they don't want to watch me, they can't. I don't really talk about them that much anymore because I think they're just kind of irrelevant. Um, I see them as just kind of this little LARP movement of people who are counter signaling against a weak and often impotent mainstream Christianity. Um, but I don't think, like, Europe's never going to go back to worshipping Wotan. It's never going to have, like, some widespread public acceptance. It's just a pipe dream. So I just don't talk about it much anymore because I don't want to promote it. 
and because I don't think it is like a rational issue, I think it's a um, political issue. It's not really neo paganism isn't really a religious movement. It's a political movement masking itself as religion. It's it's interesting because it's the religion of neo paganism is a hundred percent basically the same as as political views, and I think it's I don't really like. I don't think your political views and your religious views should be a hundred percent. I think there should there needs to be some tension there um, to just force you to think about these things and to be a better person. So I don't really like neo paganism. I'm not even like a radically traditional Catholic. I'm just conservative. I like Pope Benedict. I go to church every week. Um, I try to pray, although I find prayer. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, but I just try and try to, as much as I can, be a good Christian. Um, and that's that topic. Uh, the other main thing a lot of people are turned off by is, is neo-Nazis in the community. And I don't like neo-Nazis. I don't like Nazis. I think I've been pretty clear on that in the past. But I'm just restating it. Um, I have all kinds of issues with National Socialism. Um, from it's the way that the Nazis treated the disabled and handicapped. I don't like sterilization. I'm pro-life. I don't like... Ultimately, I think part of being a nationalist and part of caring about your people is caring about your people who can't take care of themselves. And I think it reflects really badly on you as a society if you just sterilize or, ga or um, gas everyone who doesn't meet your standard of perfection. Um, if you're going to have a, a, the nation as a big family, if you're going to have this love of your people, I don't see how that includes um, what they did to them. Um, with regards to the um, the Holocaust, I do think it happened. Um, I think there's too much evidence to say it didn't happen. Now, as for the exact details, I'm not really sure. The problem with the issue is it's a bit like 9-11. It's so heavily politicized by all sides, both the people who support it and the people who are against it. I don't know if a really objective account of what happened is possible. Um, my view is basically um, there shouldn't, that I think it happened and I think millions of people died. I don't know the exact body count. Um, it does keep changing. I still think there was a genocide. It, it just does keep changing. Um, so I don't know like exactly. I kind of think in, in my perfect world, um, the denial laws and specifically the laws saying, oh, you have to say six million people died should be repealed. Uh, you should get professional, fairly objective historians to just review all the evidence, and I'd probably accept whatever they said. Uh, that's my view on it. Overall, though, with regards to all the Hitler and neo-Nazi stuff, I just think it's it's a waste of time. I don't really talk about it much anymore. You're never going to, like, convince the public that the Holocaust didn't happen. You're never going to convince them that the Nazis were good guys. I think it just makes us look bad. I think it's a waste of time and resources. I think, like, for instance, you could you could go to, like, you could convince white people pretty easily race realism, particularly ones who have to deal with blacks and have to live near ghettos. I think that's easy to convince them of. I think convincing people of gay marriage being bad, of immigration being bad, of all that stuff is really easy because I've talked to a lot of liberals even who don't like multiculturalism. So I think a much more efficient use of resources is that stuff. I think the Nazis, much like attempts to rehabilitate the KKK, are just a complete waste of time. And, and that's why I don't even bother talking about it anymore. So I just don't really want to give it credence. So I guess that's um, my backstory. That's basically, I guess you could say, what I believe. I like to think I'm pretty moderate and I'm pretty down to earth about the whole thing. Um, so I guess you can say I'm, uh, generally speaking, a traditional conservative. Uh, I believe in capitalism. Um, I believe people have a right to pursue their people, to, uh, to um, preserve and advance their people and their culture. And I believe in Jesus Christ. And that's basically where I come from. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the channel. This is Argent, and I'll talk to you all later.